In this video, I'm going to look at how we can use the definite integral to calculate the area under a curve. Uh, the theorem states here that if your function f is continuous and non-negative on the closed interval from a to b, then the area of the region bounded by the graph of the function f and the x-axis between the vertical lines x equals a and x equals b is given by the following definite integral. We're looking at this integral here. Notice the integral from a to b f of x dx. And what this is telling us is if we go on the x-axis from a to b below this function f of x, we can calculate that particular area all the way down to the x-axis. Now there's two important things we have to consider. One is your function has to be continuous and it has to be non-negative. So that means your function is not able to go below the x-axis. And we'll look at if it does, we can make a correction to uh, actually find the correct area if it does go below the x-axis. So here I want to pull up an example we looked at before. And that was the integral from 1 to 3 for x squared dx. And I'm not going to go through all of this again. We did this in a previous video. And we went through all the calculations of the integral, and we came up with an answer of 8 and 2 thirds. So here's the integral again. And if we sketch the graph of x squared, and we're looking at the interval from 1 to 3, so that means down here we're going from 1 to 3 on the x-axis. Let me draw this parabola a little bit better here. If we're going to go from 1 to 3, then here's our vertical lines that we want to calculate the area in between the function x squared and the x-axis. So we're trying to calculate this area here. And notice, even though this looks like a trapezoid, this line here for our graph is really curved. So we don't have a ge uh, geometry uh, formula to calculate this particular area. But when we found this integral to be equal to 8 and 2 thirds, we actually found the area underneath this curve. Okay, So that's what this theorem up here is stating. As long as your function is non-negative, then from the interval a to b, we're calculating this area here above the x-axis and below your graph. And of course your lower limit, which is 1, your upper limit over here, which is 3, that gives us our boundaries on the x-axis. So let's look at another example. We have the integral of 1 to 3x dx. And if we were to look at the graph, we're not going to do the calculations. We're actually going to draw out the region for this one. And we know that if we have x as our function, then y equals x is simply going to be a line that goes right through the origin. But our limits here, notice we're going from 1 to 3. So here we go from 1 to 3. And now this time, because we do have a straight line, in this point we do have a trapezoid. So if we want to calculate the area of this region, then we can find the area of this trapezoid by simply taking 1 half base 1 plus base 2 times the height. So once again here we would have, we could call this base 1, this is base 2, this is the height. So if we plug 1 in once again here we're going to get 1, base 2 would be 3, so we would end up with 1 half times 1 plus 3, and then the height, 3 minus 1, this is going to be equal to 2. So we know the area underneath this curve, y equals x, between 1 and 3, is 4. Now, if you want to take the time, we could go back and do this, calculate this integral 
just like we did here with the x squared. Now, because we actually have a geometric formula for calculating the area of a trapezoid, there's really no need to do that. So we know here the answer to this integral would be 4. So let's see if we can apply it to this example where we have the integral of 3dx. We're integrating from 1 to 3. So if we sketch the region, what is this graph going to look like? Well, our function is 3, so that means we're simply going to go up 3 here on the y-axis. And of course, y equals 3 is going to be a horizontal line at 3. And we're looking at our limits once again from 1 to 3. So if we start at 1 and we go over to 3, notice here when we calculate the area, we're simply finding the area of a rectangle so we know we can take the length times the width and in this case we would end up with 3 minus 1 which is 2 and then of course we know that we're going up 3 so that's 2 times 3 so we have an area of 6 which means this integral is equal to 6 all right, those examples were pretty straightforward. Now I want to go back and look at one of our first examples we looked at. Again, here's all the work we looked at the integral of negative 2 to 1, 2x dx. And this one's going to be a little bit different because if we look at the graph of this uh, particular function here, we have y equals 2x. Here is the graph y equals 2x we simply have a straight line here again passing through the origin and notice now if we go back to our definition our definition said a function has to be continuous but it also has to be non-negative on the interval from a to b well all the examples we looked at so far are above the x-axis. The function is not negative. Now this one here we looked at, notice the function's negative, but the interval from 1 to 3, the function is entirely above the x-axis, so therefore the area is certainly equal to 4. And the same thing for this example, again the function is completely above the x-axis. But now if we look at the graph here of y equals 2x, we see that if we're integrating from negative 2 to 1, well, if we draw in our lines here from negative 2 to 1, what happens when we integrate? Well, we notice we integrated this problem before and we had a negative 3, and that certainly cannot be the area because we have a negative value. But if we look at trying to calculate the area of, let's say, this particular region here, which is certainly just a right triangle and we can calculate the area by saying the area here is going to be equal to one half the base times the height so that would be one half our base which is going across here would be two and when we could say the height is going to be what well if we plug in negative two here that we know that this is going to go down four so that would be times four and we end up with an answer of one half times two is one times four is four and if you want to think of it in terms of positive and negative we know that this is going down so you can think of this as a negative four so this answer would turn out to be a negative four but because we're talking about the area we know it's going to be a positive value then if we go over and calculate the area of this other right triangle again we could take one half times the base and the base here would be one and the height would simply be two and notice we end up with an answer of one what's happening when we integrate it and you probably can see this now notice we had a negative three when we integrate from negative 2 to 1 this part is below the x-axis that is being calculated as a negative 4 being added to the 1 
and therefore we end up with this answer of negative 3. Now keep in mind that's okay for the integral but if you're looking for the area we know the true area for this particular region if we're calculating the area then we have to kind of compensate for this part going below the x-axis and we know that therefore this 4 is going to be negative so we could simply put a negative in front of the negative 4 so when we perform our calculations this is really then 4 plus 1 so we know the actual area of the region would be equal to 5 okay so this would be the actual area so what we would have to do with this example is because our integral is going from negative 2 to 1 if we go back here and see the original problem was negative 2 to 1 2x dx so if we're trying to integrate from negative 2 to 1 2x dx we would really need to split this into the integral of negative 2 to 0 that's where the graph uh, goes from below to above so we know from negative 2 to 0 our graph is below the x-axis so we know when we integrate from negative 2 to 0 2x dx our answer is going to be negative so to correct that we can simply put a negative in front so when we integrate we get a negative and the negative out front will make it a positive and then we could simply add the integral from 0 to 1 so once we do the calculations here again you would end up with negative 4 and then we would have the negative 1 out front plus the integral of 0 to 1 2x dx would be 1 so therefore the area would be positive 4 plus 1 which gives us the area of 5. Now we'll talk a little bit more about this later but one other thing I will go ahead and mention and you can kind of experiment with this when we write our limits here negative 2 to 0 for this problem we're going from negative 2 to 0 2x dx we know that when we integrate this the answer is going to turn out to be equal to a negative 4 now there is another way that we can change the sign here if we were to integrate 2x dx now normally we want to integrate from your lowest to your upper limit but if we were to switch those around and make this from 0 to negative 2 then our answer would turn out to be a positive 4 so if you simply switch your limits uh, that's only going to really change the positive and negative sign of your number you're going to still come up with the number it's just going to make it positive or negative okay so that's how we can actually use our definite integrals to calculate the area underneath a curve. Just keep in mind the function must be continuous and it has to be on a non-negative closed interval. And just like the example we looked at, if it is negative, then we have to make a correction. And we can certainly do so by splitting up the integral where it goes from negative to positive. And that way we can make a correction so that we don't end up with a negative area. Now, before I finish, I want to really stress that if you were given this problem and it said simply to evaluate the integral negative 2 to 1, 2x dx, then your answer would be a negative 3. If the problem said we want to calculate the area with the curve from negative 2 to 1, then if we're calculating the area, then our answer would be the 5. So just because we're talking about area, not all the time when we look at integral are we looking at the area. So I want you to realize when you integrate, it is okay to have a negative answer as long as it's not looking at the area for a particular problem.